Hey, mi gente, it's Julian Steve. You already know my name, but if you're new here, hey. Today, we're going to be talking about the gentrification of reggaeton. And before we even get into more stuff in the video, I do want to say, first off, my microphone is not working. The one that I bought, well, that my mother bought for me as a gift. So you're hearing from the first microphone from me creating YouTube videos on this channel. So if you could tell the quality is not the same, now you know. <laughs> The second thing I wanted to say is that this is my second time filming this video. So with the issues with the second microphone, we're here recording for the second time this video. And if you do not believe me, somewhere on the screen, I'm putting the audio, not the audio, but more like a video of the second video right now. Back to the script, I'm going to define what is gentrification? A process in which a poor area as of a city experiences an influx of middle class or wealthy people who renovate and rebuild homes and businesses and which often results in an increase in property values and the displacement of earlier usually poorer residents. While gentrification does happen in inner cities, we're talking about how society and the music industry goes hand in hand with gentrification, which excludes most Afro-Latino artists in reggaeton and its origins. Aviso, mi español no es perfecto. But you no know, voy a intentar hablar no necesario. Por ejemplo, los nombres de los artistas y las canciones. Okay, mi gente. Okay, mi gente. Okay. Vamos a comenzar ahora. To start off, we're going to discuss the origins of reggaeton. Reggaeton started around the 1970s or the 1980s. Reggaeton was inspired by reggae music by Jamaicans, specifically black Jamaicans who migrated to Panama to build the Panama Canal. However, there were debates on the origin of reggaeton. Some sources say Panama, Puerto Rico, and New York City. Well, we're going to go with this theory. Jamaicans inspired Panamanians and Puerto Ricans to infuse reggae and espanol. Reggaeton was usually created or heard in low-income black areas. These were afro panamanians afro Puerto Ricans, and Black Jamaicans to be specific. Pioneers of reggaeton include Angelina, Renato, Biko C, DJ Negro, Nando Boom, DJ Fryo, Misa M, Daddy Yankee, Dego Gadoran, Evie Queen, to name a few. Again, to name a few because there were more, but they were more underground. As for the United States mainstream success of reggaeton in the 2000s and the US Hot 100, we have to credit Nori and Pitbull, believe it or not. Daddy Yankee, Do Omar, and Wincy in Yardell. Bang my tiny prince, gonna go chica 
las que le gustan firmada Viene para el baile, se ya no quiere bailar mm. Muévelo, muévelo, que sabrosa Muévelo, muévelo, como lo hace Venga a bailar to the gentrification of reggaeton while also being very very research driven at the same time number one racial mixing in latin america yes racial mixing in latin america has shifted reggaeton music and i have a few examples so this could make sense to you all in case you're probably wondering why would i say something like this I have two perfect examples, Daddy Yankee and Anuel. And if you do not know, Daddy Yankee and Anuel's fathers are both mixed race. Daddy Yankee's dad is Puerto Rican, but he's a mixed race Puerto Rican mixed with black. And Anuel's father is Puerto Rican too, and he's mixed with black as well. What does this have to do with reggaeton? To some extent, they could be like, oh, well, my dad is half black, so I can participate in reggaeton music. And while that may be somewhat like, a, oh, okay, that kind of makes sense. But in the other side, it's like, but you're still not black because your dad isn't even fully black himself. And that goes both for Daddy Yankee and Unwell. To some degree, they could argue, well, I have a right to participate because we're both mixed with a bunch of things because I believe Daddy Yankee and Anuel, their mothers were Mestiza Puerto Ricans. So they could be like, well, we're mixed with a bunch of things. So how could you guys gatekeep reggaeton from us, especially with um, numerous non black poor weekends participate in reggaeton music as well so they could counter claim being like well that cannot work that that's not fair so them participating in reggaeton music doesn't surprise me that much and other latinos like them who have multi-racial backgrounds they could debate about this topic whether they have black or multiple races or just mestizo or mestiza or asian or indigenous they could debate being like well i have every right to participate in reggaeton because at the end of the day i'm latino i'm latina i'm latina or i'm anything etc 
relate to Latin American culture. And then we also have to mention they both are in relationships with non-black Latinas, which means their children are going to be of non-black race. So if that makes sense, what I just said, they're going to be non-black children because their moms are non-black as well. And then once again, Daddy Yankee and Anwell are not black or half black. They not. So that is going to make it shift even more, especially if their children end up participating in reggaeton music. That's going to change the landscape of reggaeton music even more. Daddy Yankee and Awell are not the only Latinos who have been doing this, and they're not going to be the last. But that still doesn't make it okay for us to pretend that racial mixing has nothing to do with the shift of reggaeton because that does have to do with it. Number two, opportunist people and not enough gatekeeping. And what I mean by gatekeeping is I'm meaning you put a boundary when it comes to certain things related to your culture or cultural background. And for example, reggaeton. Reggaeton originally was for people who were no income. It was predominantly in Panama, Puerto Rico, and New York City, where there were poor people, mostly black people, and mixed with black people that were poor. But as you all see, reggaeton has become profitable. So now, Reggaeton, it's mostly non-black people participating in it. Sure, they are Latinos. Ha well, most of them, because we're going to get into the people that are not Latino and they are participating in reggaeton. They're not black, they're not poor, they're not etc. So it's like, and not just say if they were poor and they were, and they happen to be mestizo, mestiza, whatever, blah, blah. While they can participate a bit because they grew up in that environment, that doesn't mean they have the right to pretend that they are the people who created reggaeton or do not give proper credit to the originators of reggaeton and the history. And I'm not trying to say they gotta be revolutionary, they do not have to be revolutionary. But as a person who's a public figure who is making a bunch of money off of a certain genre of music that is predominantly black or it used to be predominantly black, you need to acknowledge your privilege and you need to acknowledge that, hey, I'm not really the person who made this pop in or I'm not the person who, who originated the sound or the concept of reggaeton. And these people do not do that and by these people i'm talking about the mainstream non-black latino artists and it's not all of them but some of them do not and then we also have to remember there are also people who are not poor no even working class or middle class making reggaeton music now and um like when they started off they were rich their family were rich they had money j Robin. Anwell, Daddy Yankee, Kel G, Rosalia. These are a few examples of people who had some type of money, some type of income while making their way up in reggaeton music. Another example of opportunist people and not enough gatekeepers. Felix Damino Gomez Barquis, if I said his name wrong. Sorry. AKA Frex, AKA Nigga. Yes, his stage name is Nigga in Latin America. But when it comes to the United States, he changed it to Frex so he could gather American audiences. And this is what I'm talking about. These type of people, these type of non black Latino people, they want to make profit in, in America where they're is a bunch of different people from different backgrounds but they're willing to 
doing what it benefits them, but not because they think it's genuinely wrong. And what in your right fucking mind you're gonna think as a non-black Latino, you have the right to say that you're a nigga. And what planet? And I guess some people are ignorant when they were young or whatever, but you in a fucking different country. You in Panama. What the fuck does it make you think that like, you have the right to say nigga? In Panama, especially in Panama. Like, yeah, we all know there are black people in Panama. But what, you guys know what I'm saying. This guy's not black. He's not black. Why is he saying that he's a nigga? And why he thinks he has the right to say that he's a nigga? And then what's more crazy is that, from what I researched, someone said that he sounded like a black Jamaican. That is not a compliment. And then, another thing we gotta talk about is, why the hell is a non Black Latino in a reggaeton song of Selk is saying that he is a nigga towards Selk. His name is Dar Darrell, whatever. He's a non black Puerto Rican man. Why is he saying that he's a nigga? And the fact that Selk was okay with that shit, like, what is wrong with you, Selk? And don't get me wrong, I like Selk's music, but. I don't, what, I don't know what the hell is with his politic. I do not know. But he lost his goddamn mind for allowing this non-black Latino to be calling him a nigga. It, it's it just ridiculous. And the fact, this song came out in 2019. And he really thought he could say nigga in 2019. Another example. And Helena, he collaborated with this woman. Her name is called Anika and... This is my problem. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to collaborate with different people from different races. However, this is when he was starting off as a reggaeton artist in the 1980s. I get it. Latin America desires whiteness or mestizoness to numerous extent. And the fact that you're an Afro Latino, specifically, He's Jamaican, but he's also Panamanian because he was born in Panama, but his parents are Jamaicans. The fact that you thought it was okay to put a mestiza, white Latina to be singing with you in a time when representation would have been very, very important for reggaeton specifically is beyond me. Really it is. And it's more crazy because now He's a Jehovah Witness. Yeah. Reggaeton has been thriving in the United States Hot 100 and Billboard 200 charts. Honestly, Daddy Yankee has been in the forefront of reggaeton popularity on these US charts. Also, Daddy Yankee has dabbled in pop Latino music. So this has helped him to thrive on the charts. For example, Despacito is not traditional reggaeton, but happened to end up in the number one spot for 16 weeks on the Hot 100. Go Gamma is not traditional reggaeton, but hit the US Hot 100 at number 22. Now, I am going to name additional artists who have dabbled into reggaeton in their music and it has reached the US Hot 100, whether it's considered traditional or not. Nati, Natasha, Osuna, Faruka, Bad Bunny, Selk, Shakira, Rosania, Carol G, Raul Alejandro, Manuma, Becky G, Nikki Jam, Anuel AA, J Balvin, Freed, Mike Towers, and Nino Garcia. Out of all these 17 artists on the US Hot 100, predominantly reggaeton, or they dabble in it, like I said in the video. Only Selk and Osuna are Afro Latinos. I'm gonna repeat this again. Only Selk and Osuna 
are Afro-Latinos. And keep in mind, they have multiple U.S. Hot 100 hits on the U.S. Hot 100. That's a problem, and that needs to change. Because why are the black and mixed with black people in a genre that originated by black people is going to be the marginalized in the group? And I get it. Latin American, like I've mentioned as examples already, it changed. Things change. People are mixing. People are trying to embrace different parts of Latin American heritage, trying to hear different types of music. That's There's nothing wrong about that. There's nothing wrong about that. The issue is when there's erasure. People are not willing to hear from black faces. They'd rather hear it from someone who is white or mestizo or mestiza they don't want to hear it from someone who looks like me who makes reggaeton music even if it's as good as theirs or even better which is very sad but it has parallels with the united states which is why i mentioned the u.s hot 100 because i'm from the united states but my parents are from honduras but it does concern me because you would expect people that look like you to be thriving within the charts, especially in the U.S. We love to have people that look a certain way, usually European, J. Robin, or um, kind of mestizo, but they, you know, they could lead to whiteness, a.k.a. Bad Bunny, Anuel, uh, Die Yankee, Evie Queen. I could name a bunch of people. So it's like... what. Before we move on, I want to say this. I do give props to Osuna and Sek for being willing to work together always and making music together because the amount of songs they made together is so crazy. But it's also, it's nice to see that Afro and Latinos are sticking together and making music together. It makes me really happy to see that because it shows there's a unity there. Even when they the small popular group of Afro-Latinos being represented in the U.S. Hot 100. That still doesn't mean that I'm going to pretend like I don't see what is happening in mainstream music, mainstream reggaeton music to be specific, in the United States. I see it and I want things to change. I have a few ideas of what we could do with the representation of Afro-Latinos in reggaeton music. Specifically, mainstream reggaeton in the US. Number one, reggaeton artists who are non-black. Please acknowledge your privilege in the genre. Number two, mainstream reggaeton artists. Please collaborate with more Afro-Latino reggaeton artists. I do want to acknowledge that some of the mainstream reggaeton artists that I had mentioned collaborated with Afro-Latino reggaeton artists. That's great news, but I need you all to continue this. Do this with both mainstream and underground reggaeton artists who happen to be Afro-Latinos. Number three. Americans, especially black people in America. If you enjoy the genre reggaeton or do not, give it a try. However, give it a try with the Afro-Latino artist. The genre originated by black Jamaicans and Afro-Latinos. We shouldn't erase the originals of a genre once it goes mainstream by predominantly non-black faces. Instead, we should be willing to give talented Afro-Latino artists a chance, as long as they're not problematic, of course. Number four, artists, especially black and mixed with black artists in the United States. If you want Latin American artists to hop on your songs, consider to collaborate with Afro-Latino artists. 
that's nearly what Sierra has done with cost contra in jump and Isa in ever forward. All Nupe Fiasco being featured on Sima Funk's Won't Bet No. Uh, innovator, viva la imitators, meet her, the leader, eat her, beat her, don't need her, put pen and paper either, turn up my microphone, receiver, I saw. Respect to Sierra and Nupe Fiasco. I wanted to mention 10 Afro Latino artists who happen to do reggaeton or mixtures of reggaeton and other genres within their music and I'm going to name a few of them right now so you can check them out. Number one, G. Moral. She's Afro-Dominican. Number two, Shoki Town. They're Afro Colombians. Number three, Drawer X Dapper. They're Afro Colombians. Number four, Goyo. She's Afro Colombian. Number five, Rune and Fika Foyo. They're Afro Dominicans. Number six, Nos Racas. They're Afro Panamanians. Number seven, Neo Augustine. The person is Afro Panamanian. Freca en medio de la fiesta, baila Messi me la mesa una noche de esa donde los dos ven. Ven la mía, van a cuidar de mi energía. No vengan con hipocresía, mejor que vivir. Number eight, Com Benisa Me. They're Afro Colombian. Number nine, my sister. She's Afro Puerto Rican. Es una porquería lo que me hicieron todo en aquellos días, pero normal. Number 10, Mai Bell Nant. She's Afro Colombian. Concluding statement and the outro of this video. I am not saying that non-black Latinos shouldn't be making reggaeton music. As a matter of fact, I like some of the artists I've mentioned earlier. I still stand with my views on this subject. They need to do more 
to get proper representation when it comes to Afro Latino artists in reggaeton and specifically mainstream reggaeton music. And before anyone thinks I'm saying this, no, I do not think Rosalia's non-Latina ass has the right to participate in reggaeton music or any cultural Latin American music unless if it's pop Latino or anything similar to Framico, Framingo, Framico music that she be doing or she used to be doing or she infuses sometimes. She could do that. But reggaeton or similar genres, absolutely not. If you saw my video on Rosania back then, you already know my standing points about her, so I'm not going to go too much in details. If you know, you know. The face of Latin America is predominantly mestizo and white. For that reason, reggaeton representation has shifted drastically for the reasons I've mentioned in this video. However, us Afro-Latinos deserve to be represented the same way in media, whether in Latin America or in the United States. I do think things can change for the better with Afro-Latino artists participating in reggaeton. I just want to see them on the US Hot 100 charts just like their counterparts. I want to see that. Thank you so much if you made this far in this video. I appreciate you. Be sure to like this video, comment, share, and subscribe. Join the team, especially if you made it this far. Please and thank you. If the video performs well, I do a part two where I would discuss the lawsuit, Jamaican pioneers, Stewie, and Creevy against numerous reggaeton artists. In the meantime, I left two articles that I maybe use as sources for the next video, which would be part two about reggaeton, if this one performs well. So check those articles out if you want to. Muchas gracias a todas las personas que estuve dispuestos a escucharme. Por favor. Escucha más a los artistas negros de reggaeton. Ok, mi gente. Ok, mi gente. Ok. Gracias y paz, mi gente.